okay let's uh, continue with common ion effect and see how it works on the equilibrium unfortunately there is no example on your powerpoint slides but i can give you a an idea of what we're talking about let's say we have this equilibrium hydrofluoric acid the hydrolysis of hydrofluoric acid in water and uh, which will form fluoride ion and hydronium ion the common ion effect concept means uh, suppose that in this equilibrium when you have this you will add some sodium fluoride to the solution so what happens you will have Na and F, right? So you will end up having a common ion. Which one is a common ion? The fluoride. So if you are working on the equilibrium, you have to also consider the, uh, the common ion effect of fluorine. You have an extra concentration of fluorine, which is produced from uh, sodium fluoride like let's say you say you have HF here uh, which has changed to H and F then you add <coughs> NAF <coughs> and then so you see you have fluoride from two different sources then you need to consider that also in your calculations okay next concept which is very important is the buffers i don't know if you've ever heard this uh, term buffers but buffers are special solutions that resist against the ph change when you add limited not so much amount of acid or base so they're uh, they are specifically important because they ha they are pH resistant. They resist against pH change when you add limited amounts of acid or base. A very important buffer uh, is your blood, human blood, which resists against the pH change. For example, if you drink a, a cup of lemonade, uh, lemonade is acidic but you are adding acid to your to your blood it uh, goes to your blood but your blood buffer uh, uh, blood is buffer so it's uh, pH does not change significantly but of course if you drink like two gallons of lemonade that definitely something's gonna happen to you but limited amount of that lemonade it's not gonna do anything to you uh, how do we make buffer Buffers are made, so the first, uh, <clears throat> the first uh, uh, characteristic of buffers is that they are pH resistance by adding limited amount of acids or bases. Pay attention to the word limited. You cannot expect to add whatever you want and pH uh, does not change. And uh, also, how do we make it? It's made by adding the combination, or let's say combination of, a buffer is a combination of a weak acid with conjugate base it's conjugate base or a weak base with its conjugate Okay, so when we talk about buffers, we are not talking about <clears throat> the strong acids or bases. Uh, let's work on some of the examples, some of the questions of uh, buffers. 
Let's work on slide number 64. It's about love prayers. Slide number 64. Uh, what is the pH of a buffer made by mixing one liter benzoic acid? One liter of 0.02 molar of benzoic acid with three liters of <coughs> With three liters of 0 .60, 0 0.60 molar <coughs> sodium benzoate. And <coughs> Ka, which is for acid, right, is 6.3 times 10 to negative 5. So, first of all, we have dilution, right? Because you're adding one liter to three liters, so the new molarities are different. The 0.02 molar for benzoic acid is before dilution, before adding it to sodium benzoate, and also the same thing you can say for sodium benzoate. So, uh, you first need to find out Let's, let's call it benzoic acid. Like benzoic acid, let's call it HBZ. Let me turn on the light. Let's off some more light in the video. Great, looks better. All right, uh, sodium benzoate. So we have 0 0.02 molar and times one liter. Divided by, what is the total volume now? One plus three liters okay so the new molarity is 0 0.005 molar see it's less because you have higher volume and for sodium benzoate benzoate means you have it's you can show it as NABZ or the same as what you have in your PowerPoint slides you just eliminate NA and you just work with the anion. These are the same HA that I told you, remember in the first video, I said, assume the acid is HA and the anion is A negative. Those are the same thing. If it confuses you, go with the same HA and A negative with the anion. So the same thing for sodium benzoate, you have uh, 0 0.060 molar times 3 liters divided by 1 plus 3, 4 liters. So this new molarity for sodium benzoate is going to be 0 0.045 molar. For either one, uh, way, for both of them, you have less molarity. <clears throat> now it's time to build our uh, ice table. So we're going, let's go with these H, A, and A. I'm sure it is easier for you, although you'll have it as H, B, Z, and B, Z negative, but they are the same. So H, A <coughs> plus H, 2 O liquid, it's going to give you A plus H, 3 O. Oops. Okay. So what is the initial molarity that you just found for benzoic acid 0 0.005 molar? For a benzoate ion, you found uh, zero 0.05, right? 0 0.045. You see, because you have a common ion, BZ is the same in both, okay? So you have zero from acid and 0 0.045 from benzoate. This is the uh, concept of common ion. A part of this anion is from acid 
a part of it is from benzoate so for acid before it starts dissociating it's zero just like what we used to do so far but now you have an additional concentration from the other substance from sodium benzoate that's the common ion that's why we introduced the concept of common ion because we want to uh, start working on buffers then for H3O is zero because H3O only belongs to acid. Now, during the change, again, we are building our ice table. Uh, we have minus X, plus X, and plus X. So at the end, we will have 0 0.005 minus X, 0 0.045 plus X, and X, correct? Then, then we have Ka, which is A times H3O plus divided by H A. So the K A value is given 6.3 times 10 to negative 5 is equal to what is the value for A? 0 0.045 plus X. For H 3 O is X. And for H A is <coughs> 0 0.005 minus X. And uh, you make that assumption, you can assume that you can uh, eliminate x. So from this equation, cross multiplication, x, which is the value of H3O, because we're supposed to find the pH, is going to be 7 times 10 to negative 6 molar. And if you uh, plug it in there, you will see that the assumption was valid. This is such a small uh, amount that you can um, ignore it. And then, because we are solving for pH, then pH is minus log of H3O. going to be 5.15. So you see how the, uh, you solve for, uh, for buffers with the common ion. Another question. The same as the previous one. We are supposed to calculate the pH of a hydrogen fluoride, which has NaF. This is the same thing that I told you at the beginning of this video uh, when I was giving you the example of uh, common ion. You have a 0.1 molar HF solution, and uh, you have a 0.20 molar NaF solution. Ka for the acid for HF is 6.8 times 10 to negative 4 and pH is unknown. So since we are not given any, any, uh, so let me just change this to, instead of NaF, we just can say F, right? Then we're working with the anion. So since the, there is nothing mentioned about the, uh, the volumes, we assume that the volume remains constant, okay? We don't have to find the new molarities. So let's just jump to build our uh, ice table. For HF, So, 
what is the molarity of HF? 0.10 molar. What is the value of HF from, uh, value of fluoride from HF? Nothing, but we have something from sodium fluoride. So we have 0.20 molar. This is from NAF. If you did not have this common ion, it would be zero. So far you would have, uh, you were uh, solving for a zero. But now because you have the NAF, the common ion, then you have it from the other substance. And you have zero for H3O, that's the initial. For change, you have minus X, plus X, and plus X. And for equilibrium, you have 0.10 minus X, 0.2 plus X, and X. Ka, which is 6.8 times 10 to negative 4, is equal to 0.20 plus X times X divided by 0.10 minus X. We always, in these cases, we always uh, make that assumption and most of the times when you uh, disregard the X, ignore X, uh, X is going to be that small that your assumption is valid. So when you calculated X, which is concentration of H3O, is going to be 3.4 times 10 to negative 4 molar. If you try it here, you will see, yes, your assumption was valid. And then pH is minus log of 3.4 times 10 to negative 4, and it will give you 3.47. All right. Then you will do it when you, you, you will... Uh, uh, use the same thing. The only difference between this type of calculation and what you had before is that now for the anion you have a value. So far you have zero and zero for both of the products, but now the difference is that you have a non-zero value for your anion. If you're working with a specific pH, there is a, an equation which is called Henderson-Hazelbach. The Henderson-Hazelbach equation. And I introduced the very last form of this equation. The, the method how to find it is given, but let me introduce the very last one which will be given during the exam. pH is pKa plus log of A over HA. Okay, so pH of the solution is the pKa of the solution um, <clears throat> plus log of the base the conjugate base concentration over the concentration of the acid an example can be found on page 76 it says what is the concentration of h3o for a buffer solution that is concentration of acid is given concentration of acid is 0.250 molar and its corresponding salt means for A is 0 0.600 molar. If the weak acid Ka is 5.80 times 10 to negative 7, we are supposed to find the concentration of H3. So we first need to find, if we want to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, we need to find pKa. So pKa, which is minus log of Ka, would be, when you find it, 6.237. So since you're going to find H3O, the concentration, 
then you need to find pH first. pH is pKa, which is 6.237 plus log of the anion. The anion is from salt, 0 0.600 molar divided by the concentration of the acid. You do the calculation, find the log and add it to 6.273. Then you will have pH as 6.617. Are we done? No, not yet. We need to find the concentration of H3O, which is 10 to negative pH, 10 to negative 6.617 and it will give you 4 point oh I'm sorry 2.42 times 10 to negative 7 molar that's the concentration of H3O that's how you use the uh, Henderson Hazelbach equation the last part after you learn everything about the equilibrium everything about the uh, common ion and the buffers talks about acid base titration you all have taken chem 1 and you all have done the titration you remember that sometimes the students refer it to as uh, pink solution uh, experiment you added the base to the acid until the solution turned pink because you had added a, an indicator. You remember phenolphthalein? So the base is, is a procedure. So the titration is a procedure that you determine the amount of acid or base by determining the volume of base or acid. Remember, you have the drawing is not good, but. You had some acid, if you remember, in Chem 1, you had HCl. Acid plus phenolphthalein. You just added a few drops of phenolphthalein. And uh, you added base. From the burette. You kept adding the solution of uh, acid. You didn't know the molarity or just put X. But you knew the molarity of Na, which was either 0.1 or 0.2. And then you kept adding and you found the molarity of HCl by the calculations. We are not going to do the same thing again. We want to uh, find out the pH of a solution when you have a titration. So a typical diagram, and we always, uh, I mean, uh, here we just work on a strong acid and a strong base. In your textbook, you have more options, a strong acid and weak base, a strong base and weak acid, but I eliminated them. I just focus on teaching you this part, working on strong acid and a strong base, and you are supposed to just know that. For the summer course, that's too much. pH versus the volume of NaOH, okay? So, by from zero to, let's say, yeah, pH is 14, the max, and let's say you add 50 milliliters. You remember, burette was graduated to 50 milliliters. So, by adding the NaOH, the pH starts increasing, and then you have a sharp increase, and then you reach to a plateau. That makes sense in that before you add too much of NaOH, the pH is acidic and then it goes higher at when the pH reaches almost 7. 
you reach the equivalence point. I want you to know the description of equivalence point. Equivalence point is the point where the pH is 7 and means that you have added the stoichiometric values of the uh, reactants. So your, when you add a phenolphthalein, it turns pink. In basic pH so up to here the solution remain clear and then suddenly by adding one more drop of NaOH you saw the solution turn pink because after the equivalence point there is no moles of acid left whatever you have is base and phenolphthalein is sensitive to the base so what were we going to do is to solve the problem that calculates the pOH and pH of a solution in the titration. Ready? So don't forget, we are just working on the titration of a strong acid and a strong base. Calculate the pH and pOH. This is a slide number 84. Of uh, in which 10 milliliters of point 1 molar HCl is added to 25 milliliters of point 0.100 zero zero molar NaOH. So we want to find pH and pOH when these two are added. So in order to find the pH and pOH, we need to find the concentrations of H3O and OH, right? So we must find out which one is left over after we adding these two solutions. It's either OH more or H3O more. So let's calculate the number of moles of HCl and NaOH and this is the equation for this reaction strong acid and base so you don't see the, the equilibrium sign anymore so let's find the moles of HCl you need to multiply the volume in liter times the molarity so molarity molarity is moles per liter you need to change milliliter also to liter 0.01 liter so it's going to be 100 i'm sorry one times 10 to negative three moles you do the same thing for naoh moles of NaOH. So you will end up having 0 0.100 moles times 0 0.025 liters. So you will have 2.5 times 10 to negative 3 moles. So you basically determine the limiting reactant. You want to find out which one has less number of moles. So it seems like all the HCl is used, but some of the NaOH will be left over, right? How much? 2.5 times 10 to negative 3 moles minus 1 times 10 to negative 3 moles. So you have 1.5 times 10 to negative 3 moles of NaOH or OH left over remain okay but you are adding uh, 10 milliliters to 25 milliliters so the molarity is not going to be the same because you're supposed to find the uh, concentration after you find the number of moles 
divide the number of moles in order to find the concentration of OH. Divide the number of moles you found, the leftover, divided by how much? 0 0.01 liters plus 0 0.025. So it's going to be 'er you have the volume change you need to calculate the new molarity so the molarity the concentration for OH is 4.29 times 10 to negative 2 molar that's for OH now POH Easy minus log of 4.29 times 10 to negative 2, which is going to be 1.368, and pH is 14 minus 1.368. pH is uh, 14 minus pOH, so it's going to be. 12.632. So you found both pOH and pH. All right, we are done with this chapter. Lots of practice, lots of homework problems, and let me know if you need any help.